You guys may be seated. So dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the presence of God in this beautiful view. And all of you as friends and family to honor Alan and Betsy as they are united in holy matrimony. We are here to celebrate and share in a glorious act that God is about to perform. The act by which he converts your love for one another into the holy and sacred estate of marriage. So I know as I see the tears in your face and the sincerity in your heart that is with extreme thoughtfulness as well as reverence that you guys enter into this relationship together today. And it's so good to be here with you guys. The Apostle Paul compares this relationship between a husband and his wife, between that of Christ and his church. In Corinthians, he says this, that love is patient and that love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking and it's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but always rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. These three words, love never fails, if taken seriously, can change the world, and they have changed the world. And the question that I have for you guys is, will you adopt this as a philosophy of your life, that love does not fail. Now, Alan, as a husband, you might, but probably will, fail often a lot. <laughs> but Betsy, as a wife, you will, might, fail, but not nearly as often. <laughs> we all know, if we have ever been married, we all know. As a couple, you guys may falter together, but your love for one another if taken to heart, will never fail. When you fall or when you fail, remember that your love has not failed and that God's love has not failed. Today are you are choosing to love one another through making the promises that are both holy as well as sacred. Remember that love is always a choice. And when chosen, this love will not fail you. It doesn't say that love won't hurt. It says that love will not, has not, and for, will forever never fail. So my question is, Alan, are you ready to enter this marriage with Betsy, believing that the love that you share and your faith in one another will in fact endure all things? Absolutely. Amen. And likewise, Betsy, are you ready to enter this marriage with Alan, believing that the love in you share and the faith in one another will in fact endure all things? Yes. Alan, do you take Betsy to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance of matrimony? Do you promise to love her, to honor as well as cherish her, in joy as well as in sorrow, in sickness as well as in health, and to be to her in all things a good and faithful husband as long as you both shall live? I do. And likewise, Betsy, do you take Alan to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance of marriage? Do you promise to love him, to honor and to cherish him, in joy as well as in sorrow, in sickness as well as in health, and to be to him in all things a good and faithful wife as long as you both shall live? I do. Now because you guys do, you guys have written vows to one another and Alan, I'll give you your vows to read to Betsy. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Betsy. In a second. <laughs> you can take all the time you got. Six years ago, we met unaware. I think I'm going <laughs> to... That we would be here standing on top of his mountains in South Carolina in front of each other, promising before God, our families and friends. It's 
sorry, my nose. <laughs> to love, to love, to care, and to support each other for the rest of our lives. The more I got to know you, I knew there was something special. Honestly, at first I thought you were playing a trick on me. Because even in the smallest things and details, I found God's promises staring right back at me. You are, my you are more precious to me than anything on this earth that can I ever imagined. I say this with tears in my eyes and awe of God's mercy and grace. Honored and humbled that he would find me worthy to be your husband. Betsy, I promise before family and friends Sorry, before, before God, family, and friends to, to, to submit to God's word and his guidance. To be kind, loving, slow to anger, gracious and self-sacrificing, and forgiving, as God has called husbands to be. You have my word that in sickness or in health, in riches or poor, I will be, always be by your side. I promise to put Jesus first and make him the center of our lives. I pro promise to protect your heart, your mind, your spirit and body from anyone or anything that may dare to bring harm to you. Lastly, I promise to lead us as the godly man that you've been praying for. And today, we become as one. And in Jesus' name, I cover these promises and this marriage in his precious blood. Betsy, they're your best. Oh, thank you. Alan, from the moment our paths crossed on Match.com, I knew there was something special about you. I still remember the first message you sent me and the long conversations we had thereafter. You were the first and only guy to ever ask for my email address instead of my phone number. I thought that was sweet and looked forward to each email you sent me. Now six years later I stand beside you, my soulmate. Not exchanging emails, but instead exchanging vows. For that I am grateful to God, for from the very beginning he has orchestrated our unconventional love story. I feel so blessed that God gave me you, a man who is loyal, kind-hearted, selfless, hardworking, and a great handyman who fixes things when I break them. You have stood by my side in the hard times. You've seen past my imperfections. And always encouraged me to be the best version of myself. What I love most about you is that you not only love me, but that you also love God. As we continue this journey together, I vow to give you all of me and to always put God in the center of our relationship, our marriage. <laughs> I vow to care for you as God has called me to, to love, honor, and serve you. When disagreements come, I promise to be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger. I promise to share you, cherish you through all of our life's adventures. To share in your dreams and encourage you as you chase them. As we build our lives together, I promise not only to be your wife, but to be your best friend. I love you so much and cannot wait to share my life with you. May I have the rings? Let me ask God's blessing on these rings, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you on behalf of Betsy and Alan in this moment, asking you, God, that as they place these rings on each other's fingers, that they would be 
the most consistent signs of your loving kindness, your grace over each of their lives. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but for the rest of their lives together. I pray that these rings would be the symbolic gesture of the vows that they have just spoken over one another. Quite honestly, God, some of the most beautiful vows I've ever heard spoken in over two to three hundred weddings, God. I believe with every sincerity, God, that you are going to make this marriage be one that is going to be beautiful, but something that many kids and grandkids are going to build their lives off of. So I ask you not only to bless these rings, but ask you, Lord Jesus, to please bless their lives, bless their children, bless their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. Bless the legacies that they are about to start today in this moment. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So this wedding ring, you guys have me cry. <laughs> this wedding ring is an outward yet visible sign of an inward spiritual bond that unites two loyal hearts into this endless love. It is the seal of the vows that you guys just made before one another. And the giving and the receiving of these rings is literally the most important part of this marriage ceremony because the rings are made in a symbol of that which is eternal. No beginning and no ending. And so as you place these symbols on each other's fingers, it signifies that there should be no end to your marriage and no end to the happiness that you guys will share, not just with each other, but with the world that you guys are creating. But I would also ask that you guys would let me please remind you that these are also special symbols that you'll wear before this world. Your family, your friends, you will notice when you leave this place the response that people see when they see this ring on each other's fingers. For when people look at you, they will notice your hand and look at the finger on that hand. And they will know that you belong to someone special, but that also someone special belongs to you. So every day for the rest of your lives, every time you wash your hands or reach out to touch the other, these rings will be there to remind you of the great love that you share and the wonder that the person that's standing in front of you right here, right now, loves you as much as you love them. So I don't have any doubt. I know that as you guys place these rings, on each other's fingers, it will be done with thoughtfulness, reverence, and of course, love. So Alan, I'd ask you to take this ring, place it on your bride's finger, and repeat after me, but speak to your bride. Betsy, I give you this ring. Betsy, I give you this ring. In celebration of our marriage. In celebration of our marriage. As a pledge of my love and faithfulness. As a pledge of our love and faithfulness. I promise to you my love. I promise you my love. My friendship and my support. My friendship and my support. Throughout our years together. Throughout our years together. With this ring. With this ring. I do it. I do it. What, my, my turn's next, don't worry. That's right. <laughs> Betsy, take Alan's ring, place it on his finger, repeat after me, but speak to your husband. Alan, I give you this ring. Alan, I give you this ring. In celebration of our marriage. In celebration of our marriage. As a pledge of my love and faithfulness. As a pledge of my love and faithfulness. I promise to you my love. I promise to you my love. My friendship and my support. My friendship and my support. Throughout our years together. Throughout our years together. With this ring. With this ring. I be wed. I be wed. <laughs> Much easier, right? <laughs> <laughs> easier. So today you guys have chose to symbolize the vows that you've spoken, the rings that you guys have put on each other's finger, the fact that two people have now become one by this knot ceremony. Actually, it's over here. I'm sorry. So you guys can go ahead and display by finishing that knot. So today, Alan and Betsy have chosen to braid three strands together into a single cord. Each strand has a significant meaning. 
The one strand represents God who has given this gift of love. The other strand represents the groom and his life. The other strand represents the bride and her life. In braiding these three strands together, Betsy and Alan are demonstrating that their marriage is more than uniting of two lives. It's uniting with God as well. That they are choosing and will forever to choose to allow God not to just be in their marriage, but to be the center of their marriage, woven into every aspect of it. As Ecclesiastes verse 9 through 12 says that two are better than one because they have a great return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to pick him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how will one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can quickly defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you would give Alan and Betsy the ability to keep the covenants that they have just made. We ask your blessings upon these rings that they have just exchanged. We ask that they may be constant symbols of the unending love that binds them together. And as a bond and as a pledge, God, we ask that these rings encircle their fingers as their love does their hearts. Grant that they may be true and loving to one another, living in such a way to bring peace and joy, not only to their lives, but also to their family, as well as their friends who support them today on their wedding day. But most of all, God, we ask that you would rejoice with them today. We know that you do. But not only today, but in their years and decades that go beyond this day. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus name. Amen. So Alan and Betsy, may you guys mirror what love looks like in each other's eyes. Rising together on the wings of acceptance and recognize the divinity that lies within the other. Honor, respect, and nurture the dreams and the wishes that your creative souls contemplate. Be ever mindful of the God that's in you and working through you. That in time that he will guide you to reveal both your true natures. May you remain positive in times of adversity. And in these times realize and grow together. Knowing that your relationship is based on complete love as well as acceptance and use this as a model for your relationship both within and also against the invading world that tries to come against your relationship. And I'd have no doubt that you guys will continue to look to Jesus in every aspect of your lives together. Amen. Amen. Alan, Betsy, you guys have declared your commitment to one another before your family, before your friends, but I think most importantly before your God. And it gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce you as husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Love you. So with the greatest of pleasure that I get to introduce to you guys for the very first time in public as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Alan Salama. Thank you. 